Welcome to FINA Aquatics World. In this month's program, Michael Feltz on fire in Indianapolis. We follow the open water swimmers heading to Argentina and Israel. And we're at the synchronized swimming Olympic qualifying event in London. Well, time now for some pool action and another star-studded Grand Prix event from the US, this time in Indianapolis. We kick off the action from the IUPUI Natatorium with the men's event, where, among others in a high-profile lineup, Michael Phelps and Ryan Lochte were looking to continue their Olympic preparations. Well, Michael Phelps holds both the American and world record in the 200-metre butterfly, but he didn't take part this time round. Nevertheless, a high-class field included Tyler Clary and a strong competitor on the comeback trail, Davis Tarwater. You have to believe that have a great chance this summer, you know, that anything can happen. Lots of people sneak up. There are some swimmers that are not here that will definitely be on the Olympic team. But you look at Boyer and what he's doing right now, he's kind of planting the seed a little bit. You know, he went 158 this morning. Right now he's beating two of the guys that have that chance to make it. The good chance to do that right now, and he's doing a great job. Well, Bobby Bollier is coming, he's just coming off the NCAAs. We haven't seen a lot of Stanford swimmers so far here in Indianapolis, but here's one that's shining, and Bobby Bollier is going to win by a full body length and a to close touch for second. Tarwater gets second, Clary third. U.S. national teamer Bobby Bollier with an impressive second half there to grab gold in 1 minute 56.34 ahead of Tarwater in second and Clary with the bronze. In the 100 metre breaststroke, former Olympic champion Brendan Hansen was one of the strong favourites. He started in lane number two. Right there in lane two. Now he's right in the middle from really tough training. Yeah. Titus in lane four had the lead, 28-56 of the turn. I, I love Marcus Titus. I love his story, like you said, hearing impaired, but he is really good off the blocks. He goes with the flash off the blocks. He had a great swim this morning, and that's one of the guys that you're going to be able to watch for in Omaha. Here comes Hansen, though, at the end. Hansen is pushing in two. Can Titus hang on? Boy, Hansen's got a nice kick, but Titus hangs on. Double oh eight six. Well, a close finish indeed. The honors in the end going to US Pan American Games gold medalist Marcus Titus, who is born deaf, managing to hold off the challenge from Hansen in the final 50 to take gold in 100.86. Well, over to the backstroke event now in the men's 100 meters, and what a thrilling race it proved to be. Ryan Lochte has been somewhat underwhelming so far as he continues his Olympic training schedule, but at the 50 metre mark, he was still in with a shout with just fractions separating the front four. Could all score at the Olympic Games, and that's even with the retirement of Aaron Pearsall. And Thoman went out fat, I mean, he blistered 26 19. Yeah, can, he, he, can he bring it home? He was very fast, and this is where, you know, going out that fast and knowing where he's at in his training, to be able to hang on would be a huge win and a big victory for Thoman. Even if Lochte's not at his best, he's, he's going to win hang it. it. Thoman hangs on. Thoman eventually pulled away for the win in 53.95. David Russell finished a little more than a half a second behind in 54.61. Meanwhile, Matthias Giedersen and Lochte tied for third in 54.75. Well, saving the best for last as the stage was set perfectly for another showdown between Michael Phelps and Ryan Lochte, this time in the men's 200 metre medley. A good place for second right now at the very bottom of the screen. Phelps' first 100 was incredible. He's almost five seconds faster at 150. That's 128.4. <laughs> he's, he's only two seconds off the world record pace. Not going to get that, obviously. But 158 flat or 158 one, the top time in the world this year. He's going to go right by that. He is sending a message right Whoa. now to the rest of the world. Absolutely emphatic race for Phelps, 156-32. Well, another imperious performance by Phelps there, once again leaving everyone trailing in his wake. His time of 1 minute 56.32 was three seconds better than Darian Townsend in second. Lochte took the bronze. Yet again, a crowd left a swimming meet in the US with the name Michael Phelps on their lips. 
A sportsman extraordinaire must be delighted to see Olympics here coming around again with a programme that seems to be pretty much flawless so far. As we leave Indianapolis for now to return later in the show with the best of the women's action. In the open water, the FINA 10K Marathon Swimming World Cup moved on to Argentina and Viedma, located in the famous Patagonia region, for the second stop on the global tour. Three, two, one. The host nation had high hopes for success on home soil, but the Argentinians had to settle for an 11th spot among the men through Guillermo Bertola and a 7th place finish in the women's race as Cecilia Bayagoli touched in 2 hours, 2 minutes and 23 seconds. In a quite close race, the Argentinian was 15 seconds behind the winner, the USA's Eva Fabian. The Americans had a great day in Viedma as Haley Anderson took second place with Germany's Nadine Reichert in third. Greece's world champion Spiridon Giannatis sprinted down Canada's Richard Weinberger for the men's gold with Russia's Evgeny Dratsev another three seconds behind in third. From South America to Israel and the beautiful and well-known tourist resort Eilat, Spiridon Giannatis has had a tremendous season with two straight victories and the Greek continued his glorious 2012 campaign in Israel. But the Israel leg of the FINA 10km World Cup was a hard-fought contest. In a replay of the 2011 FINA World Championships, Lertz and Gionitis fought side by side. In the end, though, the Greek proved the stronger and touched four seconds ahead of his German rival. Interesting battles between Lertz and Gionitis will follow, not least at the London Olympics. If the men's race was a close affair, it was nothing compared to the women, as only one second separated the top three. Brazilian star Ana Marcela Cunha grabbed the win 35 hundredths of a second ahead of the former FINA world silver medalist Yekaterina Selevestova from Russia. The magnificent Aquatic Centre in London played host to the last qualifying competition as some of the world's best synchronised swimming teams fought for the remaining places available in this summer's Olympics. Two synchronised events will take place this summer, the duet and team. While here, 161 athletes from 34 countries took part in the knowledge that for many it would represent a last chance for their Olympic hopes. With Britain qualifying by hosting the Olympics, the disappointment on the day here was the non-appearance of the home team due to an injury. But the crowd was nevertheless enthralled by some marvellous displays, not least from the Russians in both team and duet events. For those already qualified and the others hoping to join them, this event was a perfect opportunity to sample the atmosphere at the Olympic Centre. Yeah, I think it's really cool that we get to swim in this in this pool before the actual Olympics. So, and I feel like. This pool already has kind of an Olympic feel, so it's really cool to experience that even before we get to the Games. One of the surprise packages this summer could be Japan. Chisa Kobayashi and Mariko Sakai pushed the favourites all the way with this fine display, which would give them 184.320 points and an eventual fourth place. Another dark horse at the Olympics could be Ukraine. Although the Russians have kept them in the shade, there were enough signs from this display in London that they could be in the leading pack. This routine saw Daria Ayushko and Ksenia Sidorenko receive 184.890 points, which was enough for the bronze. A great performance there, and one which puts the team in good stead looking ahead to London though they will be painfully aware of the absence of the Chinese here and the continuing dominance of their Russian neighbours. We've been waiting for such a long time for this. We were waiting all morning till this afternoon. We were so excited and obviously we were very pleased with the results. We are really happy. This competition was more than just about medals though. The Brazilian pair Nayara Leite Figueira and Lara Puglia Teixeira not only have this summer's Olympics to look forward to, but also the next one in Rio in 2016. Here they got an idea of what home advantage can mean. It's exciting to see all the people getting uh, good energy to the Brazilian people, to the Brazilian team. So we, we hope you will get there too in 2016. 
For others, this was a final chance to join the Olympic lineup this summer. 165.980 points was enough for the Swiss pair to take their chance, while there was also reason to celebrate for Israel, Austria and Hungary, all of whom secured their London 2012 ticket with their efforts here. Uh, it was a great experience and I will never forget it. <laughs> and yes, it's a good step for yes, next, next competition. The aim, though, for Spanish pair owner Carbonell and Andrea Fuentes was much higher as many tipped them to take gold here. A fine display by the Spanish pair once again underlining their Olympic credentials. A total of 193.110 was enough for the silver, but their great rivals Russia would once again lay down a serious marker for London 2012. A magnificent display there from Natalia Ischenko and Svetlana Romashina, who picked up 195.950 with this routine and a much anticipated gold medal. We are very pleased with the result. We haven't actually seen the tape yet, so we don't know which things we need to work on and which things were good, but we are really pleased with the results. So, with the final Olympic slots now fixed, the competitors can train their eyes on the future and what is likely to be a mouth-watering competition in August in this magnificent setting. On the evidence of the qualifiers here, Russia will no doubt be hard to beat, but the Chinese and Spain are also likely to have a major say in where the medals go. Coming up, more swimming action from Indianapolis. We're off to Russia for the national championships. And you find out about the Olympic water polo draw. Welcome back in part two of FINA Aquatics World, the best women's action from Indianapolis. You'll get the latest updates from the world of aquatics. But first, off to Russia and Moscow. The recent Russian swimming championships attracted the country's plethora of prominent swimmers to Moscow on their hunt for berths to the Olympic Games in London this summer. In 2008, Russia ended up in a disappointing 10th place on the swimming medal table, with one gold, one silver and two bronze medals. This time around, they hope to do better. The first step for the swimmers is to qualify for the big spectacle. Very big exam for during the uh, past three months. We didn't have any significant competition to prepare for. So this is uh, the first and probably uh, the most important competition uh, since January 1st, the, the, the 2012. Sprint swimmer Vladimir Moritsov won the 50 meter freestyle to qualify for the Olympics and is reaping the benefits from training with Marcus Rogan under coach David Salo at the University of Southern California. I don't think I'm the main star for today. But on the second day, it's easier to get an Olympic ticket. I'm very happy I was able to get it. I swam the 50 and 100 meter crawl. I can't say I'm afraid. I just aimed at the result, focused on my race, and left all other thoughts behind. I've been training with David Salo at the University of South California for two years now. They have the Trojan club team, comprising of some 20 Olympic sportsmen, champions, and prize winners. World and European champion Yulia Efimova showed her strength by winning the 100 meter breaststroke. Now I have some time to go home and see my mom and dad, and then I go back to the US to prepare for the Olympics. Anastasia Chow narrowly beat Efimova in the 200 meter breaststroke event. That means she will join Efimova in London. 
This result means a lot to me. I've qualified for the Olympics. I'm really pleased, but everything starts now, ahead of the main event. Of course, it is an honour to be crowned national champion, but representing your country at the Olympics is naturally more coveted. Unlike most other countries, the National Swimming Championships are the only chance for Russian swimmers to qualify for the Summer Olympics, which means it is make or break for the athletes. It might take away some of the focus from becoming national champion, as the minds of the swimmers are purely focused on qualification, but it certainly adds to the drama. In the women's 100-metre backstroke, Anastasia Zuerva justified her place on the Olympic team, winning gold and posting the world's best time over the distance in 2012. Overall, I'm very pleased with my performance at the championships, and I hope I'll be able to repeat it at the Olympics. In probably the most closely contested event, the men's 100-meter freestyle, Nikita Lubintsev finally made good after a dreadful start to the championships. You know, I came to the championships completely out of form, which was plain to see. I completely flunked the 400 meters and didn't do much better in the 200 meters. But now I've more or less found my form again. I got silver in the 100 meters and managed to qualify, and I still think that's a success. But it was Danila Isotov who claimed gold in the event. Both swimmers were part of the Russian team that claimed silver in the 4x200 meter freestyle at the Beijing Olympics. I am pleased. I wanted better results, but I failed a little bit. Anyway, I have enough time before the Olympics to work hard. The main goal was to qualify for the Olympics, so I'm pleased. Russian Swimming Federation President Vladimir Salnikov, a four-time Olympic champion himself, stated there are still areas that need improving, but he was pleased overall with the selected batch of athletes. I'm confident about those who who been selected to the national team and in some distance, as you saw, in 100 freestyle men, um, we have pretty pretty good group of swimmers who who was competing very hard with with each other. So for me, it's a really good sign. After a short break, the swimmers will gather in Spain, where they will begin the first of many training camps planned in the run-up to the Summer Olympics. Well, from Russia with love, back again to the USA and Indianapolis, where it's time for the women to shine. The ladies' 200-metre butterfly featured a strong lineup, including Olympians Dana Volmer and Kathleen Hersey, along with Hungarian Katinka Hoshu. After the first 100, those three were neck and neck. But look at Hosu now. He knew she was going to start to take off that third 50, and she's done just that. She did this at the NCAA Championships a couple weeks ago when she won the 200 fly, and now she's doing this again. And she broke the Hungarian record in the 400 IM last night when she won, went, went 431, and she is just flying this last 50. Well, it looks like Katinka Hosu is going to come in. Now, Kathleen Hersey's trying to catch Dana Vollmer for second. Vollmer hanging on. Hersey making a push. I don't think she is. And let's see who gets there. On the touch, it is Hersey by four one hundreds who gets second. Fabulous finish there by Hoshu, who won by a body length in two minutes 07.58, earning her not just the gold medal, but also marking a meet record. Hersey was second, followed by Volmo. The American and world record holder in the women's 100 meter breaststroke, Jessica Hardy, is looking in ominously good form in the run up to London 2012. On the strength of the qualifiers alone in this event, she proved to be in no mood to relinquish her crown and started this one as firm favourites. Coming off their Olympic trials, they sure did have a great trials there. The Aussies have always been very good in breaststroke and will be good this summer as well. Hardy looked really good in the prelims, going 107 plus, which already cracked the top 10. Now you've got three Americans in the top 10. Well, Hardy went out in 31 at 27. And she's going to win this handily, more than a body length ahead. Boy, if she can go 106 here, that would be something else. And Hardy she comes is. in at wow. 106 12. And Amanda Beard ended up getting second.
A great exhibition of speed and power there by Hardy, who finished more than two seconds ahead of Amanda Beard in second. Not only was Hardy's time of 1 minute 06.12 enough to secure gold, it also set a new meet record and marked the fastest time in the world so far this year. Well, next up was the 100 metre backstroke, where all the pre-swim talk had been about Missy Franklin. The FINA world champion has started the year in blistering form and there was to be no letting up here in Indianapolis from lane four. 29.24 is what Franklin goes out in. Four tenths faster than this morning. Only four times under a minute so far in the world this year and Missy Franklin has one of them. Yes, she did that back in January in Austin when we saw her swim there and she comes in a lot more tired, I think, than she did in Austin. And you can kind of tell with her stroke. She just doesn't have that kind of get up and go. She's certainly going to win this and just is so good at accelerating into the wall. Now, Missy Franklin almost a body length ahead of Stephanie on. She comes oh. in at 59.89. She got under a minute. Franklin led the field from start to finish, touching in 59.89. Stephanie Al took silver, followed by Kylie Stewart in third. Franklin missed the meet record she set last year by just 33 hundredths of a second. There would be even more excitement in the 200 metre individual medley where US national teamer Caitlin Leverens was up against world record holder Ariana Kukas, Pan American Games gold medalist Elizabeth Pelton and Katie Hoff in a high profile lineup. Leverens, who was in her second final of the session, having finished fifth in the women's 200 metre fly earlier, had lost the lead temporarily to Elizabeth Pelton on the backstroke, but regained it again with a strong breaststroke. Well, Caitlin Leverens just dominant on that 50. Yeah. Now See, what does she have? Does she have in the freestyle? And, what does Cougars have? And what's and, and this is Elizabeth Pelton, who has a great chance once again to make the team. You see how much. She went by Elizabeth Pelton. Caitlin Leverens went by her like she was standing still. Unbelievable breaststroke leg. And, and if she can just improve a little bit on that freestyle. And she's she going to. Caitlin Leverens going to win this. She held off Kukors and Caitlin Leverens. Well, not just a goal for Leverens then, but she also recorded the second fastest time in the world this year and a meet record. So, some great days of swimming in Indianapolis and to the joy of the spectators as well as the athletes, several meet records during this three-day event. Next stop on the US Grand Prix Tour is Charlotte, where further great efforts are expected from the swimmers this Olympic year. The Olympic Water Polo Tournament will be held from the 29th of July to the 12th of August. The men's tournament will feature 12 teams, and in the women's event, eight nations will battle for the gold. The draw for the Olympic tournament took place earlier this month. The 12 men's teams are divided into two groups of six nations. In the men's draw, we find all the medalists from Beijing 2008, Hungary, USA, and Serbia are all in Pool B. Among the women, reigning Olympic and world champions, the Netherlands and Greece respectively will not be able to defend their reputation as they failed to qualify for the 30th Olympics. It will be very interesting to follow the home teams as Great Britain, where the game originated, has not participated in Olympic water polo since Melbourne 1956. And speaking about Australia, after over four years of retirement, Ian Thorpe announced his swimming comeback in early 2011, stating he was aiming to qualify for the London Games. But unable to qualify in neither the 200 meters nor the 100 meter freestyle events, perhaps a result of too short a period to train and prepare, the Thorpedo will not represent Australia in London this summer. Thorpe's love for the water and competing is unquestionable though. The multiple Olympic champion intends to continue to seek his old form, aiming for the 2013 FINA World Championships in Barcelona. The world of swimming is in mourning after the tragic and sudden death of Alexander Dale Owen, the aquatics national star in Norway. The FINA World Champion passed away due to a cardiac arrest. Alexander Dale Owen was born in 1985. At 20 years of age, he had already become the best swimmer in Norway. 2008 was the year Dala Owen really established himself as a world-class swimmer. He became the first Norwegian to win an Olympic swimming medal at the Beijing Games, earning a silver medal in the 100-meter breaststroke. His most memorable effort came at the FINA World Championships last year, 
Just days after the horrible massacre in Norway where 77 people lost their lives, Dala Owen carried a whole nation on his shoulders, winning the 100m breaststroke event. As great as the Norwegian was when it comes to swimming, it is his kind nature and personality that everyone will miss. Alexander Dala Owen was 26 years old. And the Norwegian will be sorely missed. That's all for FINA Aquatics this month.